Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. GWIC has been on a roll recently. Their G2 20 watt fiber laser was the most affordable fiber laser on the market when I reviewed it last year. Then they released the G2 Pro, a 30 watt fiber laser that made it 50% more powerful while cutting the weight in half. Well, GWIC is back at it and has released their G2 Max. This 50 watt fiber laser continues that trend, making it more powerful, more portable, and more refined. So let's take a look at everything the G2 Max has to offer and see what this more powerful laser can do. Before we begin, this G2 Max was sent to me for review by GWIC. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this laser for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, you can use those links to help support the work we do. We appreciate it. Now let's get into it. The GWIC G2 Max is a 50 watt fiber laser, which produces a 1064 nanometer wavelength infrared laser. Fiber lasers are great for working with almost all metals, think gold, silver, stainless steel, as well as dark plastics, leather, and stone. Infrared lasers do not work with wood or transparent materials like glass or clear acrylic. And this 50 watt fiber source is powerful, certainly a step up from the original G2 and even the G2 Pro. For example, deep engraving this brass coin took less than half the passes compared to the original G2 and still achieved a deeper result. The G2 Max is very similar in appearance to the G2 Pro and also shares a lot of the same specs and features. The G2 Max has two main sections, the laser source, which produces the laser beam and sends it through the fiber optic cable over to the main engine and lifting stand. The main engine consists of a pair of Galvo mirrors, which rapidly move to redirect the laser beam down through the focusing lens and onto the material you are engraving. The Galvo can move extremely fast, allowing for engraving speeds of up to 15,000 millimeters per second. The fiber laser is a pulsed laser. You can control both the power percentage of the laser and the frequency of those pulses. GWIC says the frequency can range from 20 to 200 kilohertz. GWIC provides a list of recommended parameters for different materials, and most of them recommend about 1000 millimeters per second at 30 kilohertz. Higher frequencies can be helpful depending on the material. For instance, higher frequencies can act as a cleanup pass on metals. However, the frequency adjustment works a little differently on the G2 Max compared to the previous models, which caused me some confusion. I'll dig into that a little later in this video though. Let's finish the specs first. To help position your material, the G2 Max has an inline red laser that shines through the Galvo. This allows the software to outline your design before you start to engrave. You can either trace the outer bounds or individual shapes. I found the alignment of the red laser to be spot on, unlike the original G2 whose red laser was just slightly off. This made positioning my material very easy. The main engine rests on the lifting stand, which can raise or lower the main head in order to focus the laser. Unlike the previous models, which had both a manual lifting stand and an electric lifting stand option, the G2 Max only has an electric lift. Using the up and down buttons on the side, you can easily raise or lower the laser. The included 150 field lens means that the max work area is 150 millimeters by 150 millimeters. That's a very good size, and I never felt limited by the workspace. There are three different ways to focus the G2 Max. The G2 Max retains my favorite feature of the G2 Pro, the focal pointer. On the main head is a little pointer that slides over a ruler on the stand. The number corresponds to the distance from the workbench. If you are engraving a material that is 5mm thick, then just move the laser up until the pointer is at 5mm on the ruler, and you are focused and ready to go. This makes focusing extremely easy. The second method is by using the included ruler to measure from the top of your material to the bottom of the main engine. The focal length is 261mm, the same as the G2 Pro and the original G2. The third way is to use the red focus dots. This uses the inline red laser combined with the stationary red dot on the main engine. Move the laser up and down until the two dots merge on the surface of your material. The stand has a few more features. You can use the included screws and brackets to help create a jig to align your materials, useful for batch jobs. And if your object is too large to fit on the stand, then you can remove the middle and place the laser directly on the object. The main engine can also tilt if you need to engrave on an angled surface. Finally, using the optional safety shield, you can remove the main engine from the stand entirely and use the G2 Max handheld. The safety shield is the perfect focal height, so you just rest it on the surface and engrave. Speaking of the safety shield, it has received a much needed update. The new shield is entirely plastic with wonderful curves, and even the bottom riser is a single piece of plastic. I really like the look of the new safety shield. It retains the exhaust fan at the back to help vent smoke and fumes, and they even increase the length of the power cable to match the length of the G2 Max's cables, so you can move it around without accidentally ripping the cable out. Moving from the main engine, we can follow that nicely cable-managed bundle back to the laser source. 
That bundle does an excellent job at keeping the fiber optic cable safe. The laser source itself is almost identical to the G2 Pro, keeping the same curved edges, but packing in a more powerful 50 watt or terbium fiber laser source. On the front, we see a safety key which acts as the power switch, as well as a button to enable or disable the laser source. Around the back, we see the power input, USB connections for your computer, a USB Type-C for the lifting stand, a micro USB for the safety shield fan, and a USB Type-A for optional accessories. GWIC sells the optional rotary attachments that work with the G2 Max to increase its capabilities. Both the rotary rollers and rotary chuck work flawlessly and let you engrave on round or cylindrical objects. The rotary chuck has a few different pegs so that it'll work on any object you'll want to engrave, from small rings to large cups. The chuck can also be angled if needed. My rotary tests were great. It was easy to engrave round and cylindrical objects like this brass ring. Very easy to align the design and engrave. The G2 Max required very little assembly. The stand needed four screws to attach the base, and the main engine screwed onto the stand. Then remove the backing of the adhesive on the pointer and stick it to the lift. Plug in all the cables and you're ready to go. Just as easy as the previous G2 models. On the software side, we have multiple options. GWIC provides a copy of G-Laser on the included USB stick. G-Laser works great, and the G2 Max's manual does a great job of walking through the basic functionality and settings. For those of us that prefer Lightburn, version 1.7 now supports fiber lasers like the G2 Max. Setup on Lightburn was also very easy, and I had no issues using either software. And it's great to have the option, and I switched between them frequently during my tests. Unlike other fiber lasers that use EasyCAD 2, G-Laser's drivers don't seem to conflict with Lightburn's drivers, whereas EasyCAD 2 would require you to uninstall Lightburn in order to switch back to EasyCAD 2, G-Laser can coexist without issues, and you can switch between them at will. I was very confused by GWIC's included USB stick though. The folder is labeled G2 Pro, and the included manual is also labeled as G2 Pro. However, all the configuration files are correct for the G2 Max. Combined with the fact that there is no G2 Max label anywhere on the laser, and that it looks almost identical to the G2 Pro, this has led many people online questioning if they were actually sent the G2 Pro instead of the G2 Max. That kind of confusion is not a good thing. But now let's look at how well the G2 Max performs. They provided a set of coated aluminum cards with the laser, so it's a great place to start. These Hoffman Engineering logos are crisp on all of the colors I tested. This vector line also looks amazing, and it only took 2 seconds to engrave. And even though the G2 Max is more powerful, it is still just as precise. This Albert Einstein photo looks incredible on this black aluminum card. Brass works amazing on the G2 Max. These deep engraved coins took half the time to engrave compared to the original G2, and the depth is still deeper. Lightburn's 3D Slice feature makes it very easy to achieve these 3D effects. Other brass jewelry works just as fine. These earrings were easy to align and can even be deeply engraved with a few passes. The brass ring was also a breeze to engrave using the rotary attachment. It left a little bit of a rough surface, I think I used too much power and left some slag behind, but it would be easy to dial that in. The G2 Max left a great white appearance on these slate coasters. With a single pass you can get a high contrast engraving, and only a few passes you can get a deeper, more 3D effect. Dark acrylics and plastics also work incredibly well. It leaves a pure white engraving on black acrylic, which is perfect for instrument panels, signs, and keychains. I love the look of this 3D print log keychain, and the ruler is spot on. The G2 Max came perfectly calibrated. I picked up the stainless steel shim stock to test the steel cutting power of the G2 Max. This 5,000th shim stock, 0.13 millimeters, cut in four passes with a nice clean edge. The heat will cause the shim stock to warp, so keep that in mind. And speaking of stainless steel, let's look at the beautiful colors I was able to achieve. A huge variety of shades, from blues and greens over to pinks and magentas. Defocusing the laser by raising it 2 millimeters helped to achieve these beautiful colors. And you might have noticed that my stainless steel color tests were all a fixed frequency, with the power and speed being adjusted in order to achieve the different colors. This is different from my original G2 and G2 Pro tests, where I kept the speed the same, but adjusted power and frequency. This is because the frequency adjustment doesn't seem to have the same effects with this 50 watt laser. At first, I tried my power versus frequency tests, but this was the result. I could tell almost no difference between 70 kHz and 10 kHz, whereas on the past models, it was a night and day difference. So I tried that same test on a variety of materials, including acrylic and leather, and there still was almost no difference. I thought my G2 Max might have been defective and talked to GWIC support and even put a message on their Facebook page to see if other owners saw the same thing. But I was reassured that the machine was functioning correctly. So I did some more testing and I think I figured it out. 
On coated aluminum, I started to see some difference at different frequency. That suggested that some adjustment was happening. And then I ran a speed test of 15,000 millimeters per second at 20 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz. And here I was able to see a difference. The pulse frequency was definitely changing, and the fast speeds allows us to see the individual pulses. So what I think is happening is that the more powerful 50 watt laser responds differently to frequency adjustments than the 30 watt or 20 watt versions. Either the pulse length is different, or the laser's power output behaves differently than the other models at different frequency ranges. I think the key result is that the frequency adjustment seems to matter less for the G2 Max. Materials just don't respond as much to different frequencies. If you are upgrading from a lower model and are used to adjusting the frequency, you might need to change your mindset to adjust power or speed instead. In conclusion, I found the GWIC G2 Max an excellent 50 watt fiber laser that continues to improve upon the G2 and G2 Pro. The laser is indeed more powerful, with the 50 watts just eating through brass, making deep engraving a much faster process. I also found it didn't lose any precision when it came to detailed engravings. I love how they continued to refine the design, making it lighter and more portable. And the safety shield saw some big improvements in both design and functionality. The initial impressions were slightly tainted by the G2 Pro mentions on the USB stick. I wish there was more prominent G2 Max branding on the laser itself, just to reassure you that you actually have the more powerful G2 Max instead of the G2 Pro. But once I started working with the laser, I really appreciated that higher power. Cutting and engraving is notably faster, increasing productivity. I wish I had more insight into the frequency adjustments and its effects on different materials. I can confirm that the frequency adjustment does work, it just feels different from the G2 and the G2 Pro, which confused me during my tests. If you have any insight as to why that might be, please leave your thoughts in the comments, I'd love to learn more. The GWIC G2 Max is on sale for $2,599 at the time of recording. Be sure to check for any discount codes in the description, that'll save you some more money as well. At $2,599, that makes the GWIC G2 Max one of the most affordable 50 watt fiber lasers on the market. If you are looking for a fiber laser that can really eat through material without breaking the bank, then the G2 Max could be exactly the fiber laser you're looking for. So thank you all for watching my review of the G2 Max. What was your favorite feature? What do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're still in the market for a fiber laser, check out my other fiber laser reviews, including my original GWIC G2 and G2 Pro reviews. And subscribe to Hoffman Engineering so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming reviews. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.